Okay, so yesterday we looked at logs to base 10, and what we're going to do today is explore the idea of logs to any base, right? So we'll just uh, call the log base A. Okay, now very similar to log 10. If we want to change an exponential with some base, right, we'll, like I said, call this base A. It has some exponent or index X, and the value of these are Y. If we want to change to logarithm, we're making the exponent the subject of the formula. We're creating a log, and the base becomes the subscript. And now instead of 10, we will just have the new base, whatever the exponent was, and the value still goes next to the log. Okay, so again, the idea is the whole reason behind logarithms is to make the exponent the subject of the formula. So all the laws that we looked at when we were looking at base tens, they transferred down to any base. Right? Now, four fundamental things we need to know about logs are if we take our index laws, right, things that we learned back in IGCSE, if we take any base and we raise it to the power of 1, it will always be the same. Right? So anything to the power of 1 is the same. And if we had to convert that into a log, right, the base would remain the same, the value is a, and what we're saying is, what do I raise a by to get a? And the, re and the answer is 1. I have to raise a by 1 to make it stay the same. And in the same sense, if I raise any base to the power of 0, Anything to the power of 0 is 1. And so if we rewrite that in log form, we will get the fact that any log of any base where the value is 1 is always equal to 0. Okay, Because remember, we're solving for the exponent. Right? So we're asking, what do I raise a by to get 1? And the answer is 0. Now, two of the most important um, takeaways from our base laws were when we converted the simple idea, if we, if we create an equation, a to the power of x equal to a to the power of x, okay, so any base to an exponent, if we convert that into log form, we got this idea that if we have a log to some base, and the base and the value are the same, then this can be simplified into whatever the exponent was, even if it was 1, okay, which is a law we will learn later on. So we're looking for this similarity here. Okay? Then we can simplify it into just the exponent. Okay? And in the same way, we discover that if we have uh, exponential that is raised to a log with the same base, Okay, then that can be simplified into just the value. Okay, one important thing just as a takeaway for a logarithm to exist, so in other words, for log of any base to some value to exist, again, we're asking what do we raise a by to get x? The base has to be positive. Okay, so we cannot deal with negative logarithmic bases, all right? And also, we can't deal with any base that is equal to 1, right? So that's why for the laws and all the properties of logs to exist, we have to assume that the base is positive, but the base also cannot be 1. And intuitively, we can just uh, work out that if the base was 1, this would be the same as having 1 as 1 to the power of anything is 1, the square root of any number or the tenth root or the x root of 1 is always 1, and so the laws don't exist for base 1. Right, and also we're only going to consider values of x that are greater than 0. Remembering that x is the value. It's what we're raising the base by, right? We're raising a by some number to get x, right? And we could intuitively say, but yes, if we squared something, or if we cubed something, 
we could get a negative outcome. But the problem is we can't always, not all values would give positive, or oh, sorry, negative solutions. And so we discount those altogether. So let's just have a look at some examples. All right, we're going to do the same thing we did with the last lesson. We're going to look at two ways to solve these problems. So they want us to convert 2 to the power of 4 equal to 16 into a log. Okay. So the first method is the identify method. So we identify the base, we identify the exponent, and we identify the value. And then we write it into a logarithmic form. And so when we write things as logs, we are making the exponent the subject of the formula. So 4 becomes my new subject. And then we drop a log. We're going to, this time, instead of having a log to base 10, we're going to use the base from the exponential, which is 2. And we're going to put the value next to the log. Right? And so we've converted this into logarithmic form. And again, we can intuitively say, what do I raise 2 by to get 16? And 2 to the power of 4 gives me 16. Okay, the second method is where we are going to use the idea of logging both sides to solve. Okay, so we have 2 to the power of 4 equal to 16, and instead of just rearranging things into a log form, we're going to just log both sides. Now, when we were dealing with logs to base 10, we took log to base 10, and when we are dropping logs on both sides, what we will generally do is we will use the base that's given, and we will log both sides to that base. So I'm going to log to base 2 instead of to base 10. And the reason I'm going to do that is going to be uh, obvious just now. Okay, so when I log, I need to log both sides to the same base. I want to keep the equation the same. Now, because I've logged to the same base of the exponent, we're able to use this property here, right? So if I have a log and the base and the value are the same, then I can simplify that into the exponent. Okay. Now this is going to become more clear when we explore the laws of logs, but for now we can just use this property that we discovered previously. Okay. And this is equal to log to 16, which is the same as what we got here. Okay. Now the method you use depends on the question. For a more simple question like this, it would be easier to just identify. So to identify the components and swap. But sometimes when the equations become a bit more complex, then we might need to log the equation. All right, here we have an, a log equation, and we want to ex, ex, uh, convert to an exponential. So again, we can use two methods. So here we have log, this is to base 7, 49 equal to 2. All right. So we need to identify the components. Here is the base. Okay. Here is the exponent. And here is the value. Okay. So if we want to rewrite that in exponential form, we will start with the base, okay, and we will raise it to the exponent, and this is equal to the value. And we can see 7 squared is 49, okay. Method 2, okay, this is in log form, okay. So we're not going to log both sides because one of these is already a log. So what we're going to do is just like we can with exponential equations. So once again, if I have an example, 2 to the power of x plus 1 equal to 2 to the power of 1 minus x. If we have the same bases, we can drop the bases and equate the exponents, right? And 
we can reverse that by uh, pushing everything up into some base. And we're going to use the same base that was appearing in the log. So here we have log base 7. So I'm going to raise both sides and I'm going to put them all as 7 to the power. Okay, and I'm just going to put my log base 749 here and my 2 here. So actually I've done nothing. I have the same bases on both sides. I could technically drop the bases now and equate the exponents and I'd return to the original equation, which is why nothing has changed. Okay, But now we can use that property where if we raise an exponent to a log with the same base, we can simplify that into the value. And so this simplifies into 49 equals 7 to the power of 2. Right, exactly the same as we got here. So, so again, it's the same, it's giving you the same result. Uh, it just depends on what the question would ask you. Right, again, for these more simpler property or these more simple questions, it's better to just identify. Okay, in these ones, we are raising by an exponential base. All right. Sometimes we get asked to find the value of certain logs and usually you'll also see without a calculator, okay, meaning we need to intuit, well not intuitively, we need to simplify these logs using some, some simple uh, techniques. So let's take the first one here, we have log base 3 of 81. So what we want to do is try and convert 81, right? Can we change that into something that is the same as the base, which is 3? And the answer is obviously yes. This is log to base 3 of 3 to the power 4. Right, and again, here we have that log property, where if we have a log to some base, and the value is the same as the base, then we can simplify that into the exponent. So the answer here is 4, okay? And intuitively, we could say, what do we raise 3 by to get 81? And the answer is 4. Right, the next one is log base 2 of 128. So again, what we want to do is change this into a value of 2, and we want to raise that to some power. Okay, to the power of 7. And again, here we have the same scenario, so we can just simplify into the base, or sorry, to the exponent, and that is 7. And again, intuitively, what are we raising 2 by to get 128? And the answer is 7. Okay, the final one, we have log of 4. And the value is 1 over 16. So what are we raising 4 by to get 1 over 16? Okay, so we need to write that 1 over 16 into something that resembles base 4. So the first thing we need to think about is, right, I'm raising a number greater than 1, which is becoming a number less than 1. Okay, so the only way that can happen is if we kick it down to the denominator. So this has to be 16 to the power of minus 1, okay, in order for it to move below, okay, which we can also say is 4 to the power of minus 2. And once again, we have that property where if the base of the log and the value are the same, we can reduce to the exponent. And intuitively, we can say, if I raise 4, if I square 4, and then drop it down to the denominator, it becomes 1 over 16. 